Hello everybody, this is Lisa from Lisa Haas Custom Sewing. I wanted to do a quick video on my Wawak.com. That's W-A-W-A-K dot com. Uh, it's Wawak Sewing, and they've got tons of great stuff that I buy a whole bunch of at a time. So you're going to see the threads, uh, three cone thread stand that I bought along with my assembly problems and how I solve them here in a minute. Uh, but right now we're going to look at the little pieces that I got. First thing I got was some replacement blades. Now I'm always hitting the pin or hitting the ruler or something and creating a dull spot. I really need to get a sharpener but I got my replacement blades. I also got three dozen each of a silver tone and a black tone of these trouser hook and eyes. Now these are heavier duty than the other hook and eyes. Usually even whenever you buy a trouser hook and eye like at Hancock's or Joann's they do have this eye part but their hook part is different. So the eye part here is generally the same. Okay, but it's just the hook part here that is a little bit different than this one over here. So this right here, it's very flat on the bottom where it applies to the fabric. Very, very flat. You've got your holes spaced totally away from your tongue here which makes it really easy for sewing. It's got a nice flat shape here, a nice rounded edge, and then you've got a nice wide tongue. Now you're probably going to have to either get some uh, pliers or use your thumb and kind of mash these down a little bit. But I got three dozen each of silver and black because there's you never cannot stop using them. You can still use them on a coat too. But these are the heavier duty ones. The next thing I got was a specialty blade, which is the perfect edge blade or the edge perfect blade. What I had got it for was to try and do something like this waistband interfacing, where it has these perforations here. So it folds and you don't have all of this interfacing bunching into the fold of your waistband. You only have a quarter inch of it about every, uh, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half is how big these are. So it didn't work from this application at all, but it is kind of interesting. Uh, it will cut little bitty slices. Let's see if I can open this up without slicing my hand off. It's not like a zigzag blade. It actually leaves gaps of about quarter inch between each, and I would say that's probably a, a little bit more than an eighth inch, probably a three sixteenths inch cut. The cut on this. is about an eighth. The gap on this is an uh, three sixteenths. So what it's supposed to do is once you finish like maybe the outside of a blanket you can go ahead and run this at a prescribed distance from the edge so that you can take your yarn and you can do a blanket stitch or an overcast stitch or wherever you want to do. It still might come in handy even though it didn't work out for what I had thought it might. I'm still looking for a way to do that. Now lastly, I got some pattern hangers. I'm getting tired of all my patterns being bunched up and being laying around and me not being able to find them and losing them and having to reprint them. So I got me, there's a package of 12 in each and I got me uh, two packages. So I've got 24 of these hangers. Now what you, and I've got a two inch deep hole punch coming from Sears, supposed to be the end of the month. Here probably about another week I think. 
and it's going to punch a hole into my patterns two inches from where the edge is. So that's going to be about this distance. So that whenever I punch that hole in all my patterns, I get them all lined up over here at the edge, I punch my hole in them, and then I'm going to thread this bar through, and then hang them all up in my closet, and all my patterns will hang down straight and nice from here. So that's my Wawa call. I do, if you do a lot of sewing and where you need uh, to get a lot of these little items instead of being out of zippers or standard color zippers, I go ahead and stock up. I stock up on my black zippers, I stock up on my white, my cream, my and just my basic colors so that I always will have a basic color zipper whether to use it in a sloper or a test garment or even if it will go ahead and go with a customer's garment. So that'll save customers some money too. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. You all stay tuned for the thread cone stand being assembled and all of that. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, hello YouTube viewers. <coughs> I wanted to show you something, it was a challenge I faced, so I thought I'd share my success on how to put together a three cone stand, <coughs> threads, uh, a three cone thread stand from Wawak, W-A-W-A-K dot com. I ordered one, it was like seven dollars, not a big deal. Here's what came in. These are all my pieces. Here's our little things here, like with our serger. This is the, and I'll put a picture of the actual stand from the website. Now, I got this piece all put together and couldn't, oh, maybe I can get it apart now. Haha, <laughs> I can get it apart, okay. So we have these two pieces, a thin rod and a thicker rod. This thick rod has threading in one end for the thin one to go into. Got a bag of <clears throat> nuts and bolts. And then our cone thread platform. Now, the first thing you want to do in putting this together, because no assembly instructions came with this at all. Okay, there, there was no way for me to figure out how to put this together other than by going to the website, enlarging the photo, and then looking at it there. So the first thing you're going to want to do, when you get your nuts and bolts package, you're going to find some washers, you're going to find some of these, they're 5 16 inch bolts, and you're going to find a, uh, a wing nut, here's a little washer, you're going to find this little cap here that goes over your thread guides. And one large nut that's going to fit on your large pipe or your large rod. And then you're going to have the platform for the stand. Now I would suggest you get some small screws and screw this into the top of your uh, sewing machine table. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to take one of these 5 16 inch nuts and on the bottom of your platforms here there's going to be, let me get this other one up, see if I can pull this in close enough, see that hole? That's where you're going to thread it through. So let's go ahead and get this other one. I've got that one already done, but let's just get this one in here just to get it started so it won't come loose. And you can look from the other side to see when it starts poking out. And that's about when you want to start. Stop. Okay, so I've got those two on there. Now, the first thing we want to do is to take our stand <coughs> and our big nut. And we're going to thread this big rod a little bit in there. Just a little bit. And then we're going to thread our nut on. Let's see if I got this on upside down. I certainly do. And you actually 
should put another washer. Although the washer really won't fit too well on this. No, it won't. I wish I had a bigger washer for that, but I don't. So you thread that nut on. Maybe I had it the right way after all. Because now it's not wanting to thread on so very well. And you got to kind of keep working with this. You don't want your nut to stick out the bottom of this. But you want enough of this rod threaded through so the nut's going to be able to grab onto it tightly. And then what I did was to get myself a pair of pliers. Yeah, my pliers are old and I need a good WD-40 on it. And then just kind of tighten that nut there. Set it down and make sure that you've got it to where it's not rocking because the nut's sticking out at the bottom. Okay, so that's pretty sturdy. Next thing you're going to do <coughs> is to take your two cone, after you've already got your little screw in it, you're going to take your two cone platform and slide it down to wherever you want it. Now, tools that you're going to need is going to be one of these ratchets with an extension and a 5 16 inch socket. And you want that extension so you can get in here, let me flip my lever, and start tightening this. And you can <clears throat> finger tighten it until it starts grabbing. Now I'm doing mine just still on the rod part and not getting it into the threading. So there with my fingers, I feel it grabbing right here. So now I'm going to take my ratchet and start tightening it. Now it is a little tricky to get in here. Now, once you've got that all tightened, set it down again <coughs> make sure it's stable. Next thing I want to do is to put my single platform on it, and we're going to do the same thing. Let me untighten that a little bit. And it needs to go directly in the front. Let me lay this down. Uh, let's go ahead and tighten it up. Okay. Now it's pretty stable. Alright. Next thing is to get this <coughs> slender rod. <coughs> and I actually think that what I'm going to do is to start assembling it this way first. You're going to take a nut and you're going to put it all the way down to the bottom of one end of this rod. We're going to start assembling the thread guides. The fudge. Okay, the thread guides, we want this part to stick up. Put a washer over it, I guess. You could put a nut over it if you wanted. I don't have another washer. Don't know that I'm going to need one. Pull them as far out this way towards you as possible and kind of keep them evenly spaced if you can. If you can't, that's okay too. Just the only thing you're going to make sure of is this large hook part is going to face upwards. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is to take this little cap that I got and we're placing it over this and then we're going to take these and move them around to where they're in a different slot. I'm taking another nut. It actually says the wing nut and you could do it that way. Let's just do what it shows. You 
use your fingers kind of to hold this apart and tighten it. You might want to get your pliers down here, hold your rod and tighten it. Okay, that's tight. And then we're going to go ahead and Now you get to see my computer. We're going to go ahead and thread this guy in. One thing I should have probably done before I put these platforms on, there are rods that go up from these holes, but that's okay. I'll turn it over. Okay. This is in pretty tight. You can go ahead and hold your, get your pliers in there if you want. And make sure that it's in there good. And then you're going to want to come up here and adjust this because we want one in front and two on the side. So let's just turn that. You can go ahead and turn these a little bit if you want. Let's get the pliers in. Now these are nice, good, stiff metal rods in here, so it is going to take a little bit of an effort to turn these to where they're straight. That's pretty good. Alright, that looks pretty good. Next thing are these rods. Let's go back down. And they come up and you've still got a 5 16 inch nut. Take your nut off and you've got a washer. A lo uh, it's not a lock nut washer, it's just a washer. Leave the washer on. Stick it under here. And put the nut back on. If you can. There we go. Let's get all three just kind of put on. Get in here with your ratchet. And you're probably going to need your pliers on the little rod. Yeah, my hands don't work as well as they should. Okay, there's one. Got an extra nut. Usually they will include extra nuts or bolts or washers. Just get that finger tightened for now. Get your pliers, hold the rod, tighten it up. Okay. 
excuse me. Okay, the last thing that you need to do is to go ahead and put on these little foam discs. That's going to soften your thread. Keep your thread a, thread a little soft bed to sit on. It seems a little wobbly, but if you go ahead on this base down here and get yourself uh, three screws and screw this in and then uh, assemble, or after you assemble, <laughs> you might want to wait to assemble everything but this large rod and the base. Put that big nut on, put the large rod on, screw your base down in so it's real stable, and then fin finish assembling the rest of it. But this is basically what it is. You get an extra foam thing, and then these don't have to go all the way down. Let's get you up a little bit. These really don't have to go all the way down. Because the cone's going to fit kind of inside of this. Ah, come on. Get it in there. Okay, and there it is. There is my three cone stand, which I need terribly to uh, use the cones of thread that I do as a sewing. So there it is. I just had a little bit of a problem putting it all together. Couldn't figure it out. I'll show you what I did on the website, and I'll drag that in before I publish this. Thanks for watching. You'll have a great night. Like subscribe, comment, or share if you like, and bye. All right, this is the uh, uh, cone stand that I bought, and I'm going to show you how I had to figure out how to put it together. Now, I had to actually increase the magnification on my browser window here. If I hit Control zero then the browser window should go back to its regular magnif regular zoom size. It's not doing it for some reason. There it goes. So there's your reg regular magnification, although I can't see. So I had to hold down my control key and hit the plus sign until I got it to a magnification that I thought I could work with. And I hit it about four times. Okay, that's much better. So when I was looking at this, I knew this was the base, and by playing around with the parts on it, I knew that only that very, very thick rod could fit in this base right here. And only that large nut could hold that in place, because there was only one way for this to attach down here. So I knew I had that figured out. And then because of how wide the hole is here, it fits into only this large rod with very little wiggle room. So I knew that it, these two platforms would fit over the large, wider rod. Now you can't see it here, but I knew that there was a transition between this large rod down here to the narrow rod, let me go back up, to the narrow rod up at the top, that only these right here would fit in. And the wing nut, that's the only uh, threading portion that the wing nut or any of these other nuts down here would thread into. So. By looking at this, it's kind of hard to tell that this is the wing nut, but if you look closely, yes, this is the wing nut on top. I knew that these little things had to go underneath this little cap because that's why it keeps them spread apart, and then it looked like there was another nut there. So that's how I figured out how to put the top part apart uh, together. And then, of course, this shows these little cone caps, these little rod caps, at the very top, which would work too. So when I go back and hit zero to get this back to my regular magnification, once I put it all together, it looks like this. 
All right, and that's how I figured out how to put it together. Thanks for watching. Bye.